So I'm very busy putting everything in crates for my big move to Calgary, but I still wanted to show you one of my new toys. This here is a Kirisi AXL 47. It's a semi-automatic shotgun with a 3-inch chamber distributed in Canada by Revolution Armory. This is originally made in Turkey, as the barrel will say. So, as you can see, this shotgun looks a little bit weird. In the words of the Great Sage CV-11... This is the Star of Torment. It is also my favorite weapon. Imagine if a flat cannon and a nail gun hate-fucked and had an equally hateful baby. Well, imagine if a Saiga, an AR-15, and a C-550 had a hateful threesome. That's the hateful baby. That gun is really, really weird. It has AR-15 controls and kinda AR-15 trigger pack. It has a different hammer inside. It also has kind of an AR-15 trigger that doesn't completely look that gun, blah, that doesn't completely goes to safe. It has a ping pong paddle, obviously, with a porthole open inside. It's got a SIG 550 system for the main spring that is in there. There is absolutely no spring in uh, in the upper receiver, and the gas piston is located right there. There is an actual port that goes from the gas block to the piston in this chamber. This shotgun comes with a 5 round mag and a 2 round mag, which I guess is supposed to be for hunting in places where you have restrictions. You put one in the chamber plus this magazine. These magazines are compatible with the Deria Mark 12, for example, so any kind of magazine of that type should be able to fit in that little guy. As far as chokes are concerned, this gun is supposed to be able to take one. However, I look into the manual provided by Revolution Armory on the website and there is simply no indication as to what kind of choke this gun is taking or how to actually remove them. Because if you look inside of the flash hider, sort of, you can see that there is not really any key inside of, uh, inside of the barrel to allow you to remove them. So I am honestly unsure as to how I'm supposed to put any chokes in them. Regarding the features of the shotgun, like I said, you have kind of an AR-15 trigger pack with an AR-15 uh, safety, not, uh, not compatible. The hammer is also different. Obviously it is semi-automatic with a fairly stiff spring with obviously the ping pong paddle on the other side if you want to lock it up like an AR-15. This lever right here is not actually a, how say, a magazine disconnect, for example. Right there. So this is not a magazine disconnect. This is a piece of plastic that goes up and down and quite frankly only prevents the lower receiver from coming apart from the upper whenever you remove the stock. That is the only use that it has. If you put a magazine inside, let's do it with the two round one, get in there, you can see that it's going to be pushed up and when the bolt goes forward, it's going to slam into this plastic part and mangle it. So don't do that. Almost did it. On the front-hand guard, you have a copy of the AFG, and you have this kind of vented metal handguard with two pieces of Picatinny rail on the side and a full-length one on the bottom. The part that I'm not really understanding is they vented the handguard for heat dissipation, obviously. However, this is very tight, so good point on them, but I do not understand why in the world would they put these weird vent holes inside instead of M-Lock, for example, or Keymod even. To me, that doesn't make much sense. In the back, you have a fixed stock with a padded back or a padded butt, an adjustable cheek riser that you can just unscrew and adjust as you see fit. Personally, I just leave it completely to the bottom. This particular part didn't come with a, with a rifle, obviously. This is just a sling loop that I just made with paracord. 
This is the first discrepancy that you find in the gun compared to what is displayed on Revolution Armory. On Revolution Armory, you can see that the picture of this gun has kind of an AR-15 stock that you can adjust and also with a cheek riser. This one is fixed. It's not that much of an issue compared to the length that I usually use, which is, like Carl from in range would say, about an A1 length. So I don't have any problem with this one, at least for now, but I don't really like to see the picture on the website not reflecting the final product. Now onto the sides. As you can see in the back, we have a rear side that's, that is adjustable for wind edge and elevation. This is a two dot arrangement in the back and the front post is kind of an AR, uh, an AR-15, no, uh, kind of like an AK-47 sight. The front sight is not adjustable at all. It is completely fixed. So you have to do everything on the rear sight. In and of itself, that's not a problem. However, there is another discrepancy. On the website of Revolution Armory, we are told that this is supposed to be a fiber sight. Obviously, as you can see, there is no fiber optic anywhere on it, and there's also no provision to actually install one. The other problem being that, as you can very easily see, the two dots are not even the same size. So the same size, sorry. The left one is decently painted, but you can see it does not occupy the entire recess. The right one is pretty mangled, I would say. You can obviously put a red dot on it, considering there is a Picatinny rail on top of it. The Picatinny rail, however, is a little bit strange. On occasion, I can feel it move under recoil. And the other thing that I'm wondering, I'm not a big shotgun guy, so you tell me if it, if it is possible. It is obvious that the top rail can be removed. The top rail and the sight is one piece. So if you want to remove any of it, you have to remove absolutely everything. And you have this dovetail completely at the bottom, which I'm guessing can be used to fit another kind of scope on it. Another part that I don't really understand with this particular gun is you have the dovetail going completely to the front and actually getting a little bit wider at the end. I don't really understand why they did that. In my opinion, it would have been way easier to just machine uh, a Picatinny rail for the entire length of the upper and continue on the handguard. I really have a problem explaining myself why they did it like that. But, good thing for the gun, it is extremely stiff. There is absolutely nothing moving anywhere on that gun. So what's the reliability on that thing? Well. I took it to one of the places where I can shoot. I didn't go all the way to the other place because, quite frankly, I'm busy. And I tried to shoot it. I had multiple types of loads and uh, it was minus 17 degrees Celsius. You'll see, what, uh, you'll see what the problem is for yourself. Federal double back shot. Failure to fire. Failure to fire. Yep, double feed. Federal double back shot. Failure to feed. Uh, failure to fire. The left hand open. Yeah. Classic with this one, light primer strike. Now it works. 
Federal rifled slugs, two and three quarter inch. There's a hole. Light primer strike. Locked open. Yeah, light primer strike. Works. Winchester two and three two and three quarter inch low recoil slugs. Fucking hole. Let's see. Failure to fire. Nope, failure to feed. Ejected, done. Three inch, two kilo from Winchester. This is a failure to fire. And done. 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 So the rifle is capable of shooting absolutely everything that I put through it. However, it does have a problem with light primer strikes, which is kind of strange to me because whenever I look at the shares that I fired, you can see that it really craterized them. However, as you can also see, they are not actually centered, which on a center fire rifle is supposed to be a problem. And if you look at the, at the mark left by the brass on the bolt head, you can see that it's actually not even centered. If you look at the, at the firing pin, you can see that it's off to, the, to this side, towards the inside. I am honestly not sure if this is a defect in the gun or if it is something more general to this uh, particular model. So what can I say about this shotgun? Well, there are many good Turkish ones, some very good ones. This is not how this is not one of them, however. The problem of light primer strike could probably be fixed by an armorer. My issue is if I buy a gun for about uh, what was it? 800 bucks for this one, 8 or 900 bucks I believe, Canadian. I expect it to work out of the box and I expect it to not have a shitload of light primer strikes. My other issue with the gun, or I should say with uh, Revolution Armory itself, because I could not find the owner manual of uh, Kerisi, Revolution Armory decided that a disassembly guide was not necessary inside of the owner's manual. I found that you have to remove this screw, obviously, which is held by a nut on the inside of the other side of the stock. Once you take the stock out, you can take another screw out of the, out of the gun. Then you have the lower and upper that come apart, that's not an issue. Then you have these two parts of the, up, of the upper. They are held with this pin, which for the life of me, I could not get out. The other problem is, as I said, it's a bastard of many systems, including the SIG 550, which means the main spring is in the front. For the life of me, I could not take the handguard off. I don't know if I'm doing something improperly, but I removed every screw that I could, and I still couldn't take it apart. So, Revolution Armory, I don't know what the hell you're thinking, but always put the disassembly guide in the owner's manual. That's owner's manual 101. For fuck's sake. So would I recommend this gun? Absolutely not. There is 
quite a few problems with the light primer strikes and you know also the fact that the firing pin is actually not centered on the shell I don't know if it's a default of manufacturing or something else or if it's even linked to the light primer strikes I don't think so considering that it's really making a crater in the primer um, the compatibility of magazine is a nice touch but again as I said if you are not going to if you're going to have light primer, light primer strikes on every single one of your uh, of your magazines that's not really a plus the rear sight is, obvi is obviously not fiber optic unlike what uh, Revolution Armory is claiming the stock is fixed instead of being adjustable and considering there is already a 20 inch barrel I cannot actually explain myself why because it would still be non-restricted with, with the retarded Canadian laws with that particular length so I don't know what else to tell you on that particular gun once I am done moving to Calgary and building the cryptocurrency farm for my client, I should be able to go back to better rifles. I have an RDB somewhere just for that. In the meantime, you can subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like if you enjoyed my videos, and hopefully next time I will have something better to show. Salut, bonsoir!